You are a PC gamer. You are strong, independent. You don't need a graphics card to satisfy your desires. As long as you've got um, Intel UHD graphics, you'll be fine. Just, uh, just fine. This isn't going to be fun. Intel's UHD 630 graphics were the standard iGPU on their processors from the 8th through to the 10th generation, which seems to be the point where Team Blue realised they were getting mullered by AMD's Vega and decided to put some actual effort into the graphics. Of course, if you're watching this, you either picked up an older Intel because, iGPU aside, the 11th gen was a bit of a nothing burger, or you already had the CPU and don't feel the need to upgrade right now. Well, in this video I'm going to be running the integrated graphics on an Intel i7-10750H, a 45W laptop processor, through my 2021 GPU test suite and see just how low we have to go to make them playable. The CPU is partnered with 16GB of dual-channel DDR4-2933, the laptop is running in its 45W configuration, and all the games are being run from an internal NVMe SSD. After my last video on this laptop, I'm used to seeing Red Dead Redemption do at its graphical worst. At lowest settings and 720 resolution, the lowest 16x9 option available, the internal benchmark runs a score of about 11 frames per second. Fidelity FX Super Resolution isn't implemented in this game as yet, and I haven't got round to buying the lossless scaling app to unofficially add it, but I've tried using the game's internal resolution scaling to see what kind of numbers you might expect. 5 sixth scaling, which is equivalent to FSR Ultra quality, only climbs as high as 14 FPS. 1 half scaling, the lowest option in the game and equivalent to FSR performance, looks like crap and runs like it too, but at almost 20 FPS on average, it might be borderline playable, if you're desperate. Horizon Zero Dawn can just about manage to run at 30 FPS on some of the best integrated graphics available today, and, well, I don't have to tell you where that leaves the UHD 630. At native 720 and graphics manually set to their lowest possible quality, things didn't quite work out how they should. Dropping resolution scaling to 50% seemed to fix the problem, and came close to what you might call a game. With TAA enabled to sand off the edges a little, frames averaged 21 per second, with 1% lows of 10. <laughs> uh, okay. Remember that Wii game, Mad World? Well, this isn't that. This, believe it or not, is Watch Dogs Legion. Apparently the game thinks I only have 128 megabytes of VRAM, and this is what it gave me. Averages at 720 are 13.5 FPS, and at half of that they rise to 16, but come on, you're not gonna play this. Fortnite, at least, has a couple of settings that make it a viable option for integrated graphics. Running at competitive settings in 720 under the DX12 renderer, things aren't too playable with an average barely above 30. Using the Performance Alpha API, however, things improve dramatically. Even at 1080 with epic view distance, frames in this low-spec friendly mode climb into the 40s, a number which is somewhat lower than I got from the previous generation HD 630 a while back, but I, I did double check my numbers. Dropping to 720 sees a positively playable 87 FPS with lows of 43. Warzone's strengths as a battle royale lie in its AAA polish, but playing on anything less than a desktop RX 480 essentially strips that polish away. With resolution down as low as 800 by 600, things are ugly as sin and slow as molasses. Graphics are glitching all over the place with polygons flashing on and off, particularly at a distance, and the frame rate sits at 21 FPS on average and 16 FPS 1% lows. By this point, I'm inclined to recommend just playing something else. 
Control has a built-in render resolution scaler, however, it only seems to want to go as low as 720. At this resolution, Control isn't awful, but it isn't that playable either, not even managing to reach 20 FPS on average. Dropping to the lowest output resolution of 640x400 does a real number on the UI, but with frames in the low 40s, this is a surprisingly acceptable experience. I'd be at something of a loss to describe Cyberpunk's performance positively here. Most of the time I find its frame rate at low closely matches that of Horizon Zero Dawn at medium. So when I have to run that game at half of 720 low, I know I'm in for a rough time in Night City. Sure enough, 720 with 50% scaling and minimum settings only manages a little under 14 FPS with lows of 9. There are resolutions below 720 to start from, but honestly I'm not sure I can argue the point. If you own Cyberpunk and a laptop or similarly upgrade limited PC with a UHD 630, consider playing it on GeForce now. I find Apex Legends suffers from first run syndrome. On low end hardware, the first match always comes with incredible amounts of lag, while data very slowly loads into memory, sometimes causing the client to kick me out of the match. Second rounds usually fare better, but frame rates are still appalling. 720 at lowest settings hovers around the 30 FPS mark on average, which is about 20% higher than the last Intel HD graphics I tested in this game, but this ignores the single digit 1% lows. I'm afraid that Apex is pretty much unplayable on the HD 630. Even with all its performance enhancing tricks, Resident Evil Village is too much for the HD 630. At 1080 with FSR performance, variable rate shading and lowest quality, gameplay is in slow motion at an average of 18 FPS. That's not an exaggeration, the game runs at about half speed, which is particularly noticeable in cutscenes, even dropping the output resolution to 1280 by 720 a painful experience in itself, only sees FPS rise to 24 and the slow motion cutscenes remain a conspicuous problem. I did find a resolution that gave over 40 FPS though sadly I couldn't read which resolution it was, or even tell what was occurring on screen. I've added Back for Blood as a late entry to my 2021 test suite as it looked like it might be a good benchmark for low-end GPUs. Alas, it's still too steep a mountain for the UHD 630 to climb. 1080 low is unplayable with averages in low double digits, adding FSR performance lifts that as high as 26 FPS and only by dropping the output resolution to 1600 by 900 does it manage to graze 30 fps. 720 takes things closer to 40 fps and is comparatively smooth, but by this point the game looks like absolute dog shit. Oh, and did I mention the 1% lows? Even at an upsampled fraction of 720, the 1% scores are stuck in the teens. If this game was on your list of things to play, might I suggest Left 4 Dead 2? Okay, so this was maybe a less useful video than I usually make. I've got a second video in the works as part of the Can It Game series that will feature games that are a bit more in this GPU's wheelhouse. If you're stranded with a UHD 630 in a laptop or small form factor desktop, you might want to hang on for that video. In the meantime, I recommend giving GeForce Now a try. If you have a decent internet connection, or even an average one, you'll have a better time in most of these games than you will trying to play them natively. Fortnite, Cyberpunk, Apex Legends, Control and Watch Dogs Legion are all currently compatible, and most of them will be a better experience played on Nvidia's computers than on one powered by Intel integrated graphics. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.